Exporting from SQL Server to XML using SSIS can be a little bit more complex than it might need to otherwise be. I think this is one of the definite areas where the SSIS team could have spent a little more time making this integrated better. Uh, let's just talk about what we're trying. So we've got a set of rows in a SQL Server table and we need to convert those rows to XML and save that as a file. Persist it to disk as a .xml file. You know, maybe we need to put it in a variable or something, I don't know, but let's just use the term uh, a document. We need to store it as an XML file and that's what we're going to try for this scenario. So kind of think about it here. Uh, you've gone through at this point in the course we've spent 20 some, odd 20 some odd hours working through each of the tasks. We've taken a look at all the various things and it's a big beast to this SSIS. So stop for a second, maybe pause the video and try to work it through yourself. How would you do this? And I don't want you spending too much time on this. Maybe spend like a minute and just think the basic steps, like what task would I use and then within that task what would I do? Okay, so if you're back, I'm assuming that you've kind of thought it through. And here's my guess at what you have thought. Now, no fair if you knew how to do this already. Um, I'm kind of really talking to those who haven't done it. Uh, so here's what I would guess you would try to do, because this seems like the logical way to do it. We are exporting from SQL Server to a text file. Therefore, that's data flow. So let's grab a data flow task. And so we've got up here uh, an XML source, but we don't need the XML source. We just need a, pure, a plain old OLEDB data source. And let's say that we want to take a particular table out. So let's grab, uh, let's use the local host and let's use the AdventureWorks 2008 database that we've used all the course and let's pull in the whole table for human resources dot department so there are in the outset there are four columns let's just make uh, three columns and call the third one department name in the output so this set over here this is what we want exported we want three columns uh, rather three elements with attributes of department ID, department name, and group name. Okay, so there's my base query. In fact, if we click the preview, you can see it returns rows. And there's really no check mark in here that says convert it to XML, right? Like you don't see that. So then we go to our data flow transformations and let's get the XML trans. Okay, so there's no XML transformation right there. Okay, so then let's go to data flow destinations and grab the XML. De okay, so there's no XML destination. Did I hit it right? Was that kind of how you thought you should do it? <laughs> I mean, that, that's the most logical way, right? I mean, the data flow task is the, it's the fundamentals. It's the foundation of SSIS. Anytime you are exporting or importing, you're going to be using the data flow task but not necessarily here. So what we're missing uh, in this, to me, is we have a lack of a data flow destination for an XML destination. It sure would be awesome to drag and drop an XML destination and have SSIS automatically convert it. Would be sweet, right? Don't have it. Would be nice to have a data flow transformation to convert relational data to XML, but we don't get it. Now I'll pause here for just a second and I'll tell you there are third party companies who make such tools. So you could go out there into your search engine of choice and find uh, SSIS XML add-ins and probably Oh, I can think of two companies off the top of my head that do that and do great jobs of it. Um, there are probably many more. Uh, there might even be some up on the, the CodePlex, the open source Microsoft uh, site as well. I don't know. I don't know. Um, but anyway, so I want to come back 
and I want to show you a technique for getting this done. This is not the only technique. I think it's the simplest technique to get it done. Now, to get it, to understand my technique, you have to have a little background. So let's uh, let's go write some queries. So I'm going to use for this video the AdventureWorks 2008 database. Um, so if you did want to follow along at home, you've got to have it because I'm going to be writing queries that would not work in the AdventureWorks database, which I know so many people still have uh, around from you know, uh, SQL Server 2005. Okay, so in the, well, actually, you know what? You could use both. I'm just going to stick with the human resources dot department table. That'll be fine. Um, so here's our relational query. And I'm going to say I wanted three columns, right? I wanted the department ID, uh, the name as department name, and the group name. Sorry, I did something. Oh, I launched the database tuning wizard unwittingly, and I've blown up my machine. Wow. There we go. Failed connect. IPC. Interesting. Uh, D dot group name. And, you know, that that's it. I've got, you can see I, from previous videos, playing with some stuff here. Uh, let's just get a few rows where D dot department ID less than five. So we'll just get a, a few rows that we have to work with. So do you know how you can convert this relational set to XML here within SQL Server? without leaving this window, just in a query. Do you know how to do that? If you know about the 4XML clause, you do. So 4XML is a clause that you can put into your select statement that will convert it into XML. And there are several different ways to work with the 4XML clause. Uh, the simplest is to use the 4XML auto which automatically converts it into XML and then because I'm using the grid view format um, then uh, let's see let me find where you could see this um, is it here here because I'm using this guy right here this is the grid view for the results then it loads up this XML viewer if you are using the text editor here, so you are in your query window, you're saying uh, send me back the results in text, uh, so results to text, then you're not going to necessarily see that, so results to text, you're going to see the XML being listed directly. Okay. So if you want to see the text viewer, then you need to find this little grid right there, the results to grid, and that needs to be checked. And if it's not in your toolbar, then you can go under Query, Results to Grid. And that brings that up. And that way you can click through and you get to see your XML. And it colorizes and you, know, you can expand it and all kind of stuff. So anyhow, coming back to this, this is not a valid XML document. Oh, this is XML, but it's what we would consider an XML fragment. There's no root element. There are just a bunch of elements in here. So we could make this valid XML by coming over here and saying, give me a root and let's name that root departments. And it now wraps that inside the departments element. So this is now the root element. And, you know, we could further change this. Like we could change this to raw and say, I want to, instead of it uh, going by the name D for each element that you see right there, I want to call that, I want that element to be called department. And now it's a little, a little better. And just to give you the, you know, two minute guide to XML, this is an attribute centric XML document because the data is stored within attributes. An, an element centric would have the data stored in elements like this. So I just would say comma elements and now the data is stored in elements. 
Okay, super flexible, very easy to work with, very easy to learn. So now we've solved the problem, and I'll go ahead and I'll save this uh, so we have it with us. Um, XML01. Uh, it, this file will have the same file name as the video. So we've solved the problem of how to convert relational rows into XML, right? We've solved that problem right here. Now we just need SSIS to make the file for us, right? Okay, so let's take our query. Let's come over here, copy, come back to integration services. Let's get rid of this data flow. We didn't, didn't know what we were doing. We were kind of playing around with that. So again, where, what are we doing? We're going from XML to an XML file, or if you want to put it a different way, from SQL Server, from a relational database to an XML file. Okay, data flow. Okay, well, it is data flow, right? I mean, you're exporting. So now that you have XML, can you use the XML source? Because you actually now are giving, I mean, when you run that query, it returns XML. No, you can't use the XML source. Do you remember watching in Chapter 4 what the purpose of the XML source was? The whole purpose of using the XML source, XML source, converts XML to rows. Is that what you want to do? No, you want to export XML. You don't want to convert it back into rows. You just got through converting rows to XML. So you cannot use the XML source. The whole purpose of that goes against what you're trying to accomplish. You want to take this raw data and just create an XML file. You want to be able to just say file save as, and let's put it on my desktop and I'll call it scottsxml.xml. You want to be able to store a file like that. And then when you load it up with an XML editor, you want to be able to see that. This is exactly what you want. And I'll go ahead and do that. Right? This is what you want to be able to do inside of SSIS. So you cannot use the XML source. That's not what you want to do. OK, cool. So dump that out. Let's now drag our OLEDB source because we are hooking up to a SQL Server, and let's write this SQL command in. Let's just come over here. Let's just copy our query, paste it in here. So here's, here's what we're doing. We're pasting the 4XML into our source, OLEDB source. Is it automatically going to tell that it's XML? Like, is there a Use XML button over here? No. Ooh. Look at the columns that it picks up. This isn't going to do it. If you take a look at the text version of this, so query results to text, you see that weird XML underscore F52E2, some little GUID, right? That's what's being sent back to the OLEDB source. It sends back a single column, and that column's data is actually the string of the XML. And so in your integration services project, if you preview that, it's not cool. And if you, I'm oh, sorry, if you go to the columns, that's not what you want. So there's got to be a different way. So let's say goodbye to the data flow task because that isn't it. And I tell you what, we're kind of running long on this one. Let's go ahead and stop here. Come back in the next video and we'll wire it together and I'll show you how I do this.